Might should have gone in the other room. There's a full house in here. I'm glad everybody's here. I appreciate everyone being here. Looking forward to uh, our spring football getting ready to start. Uh, it's a great time of the year. As always, uh, a lot of new opportunities for guys to uh, compete for starting positions, compete for playing time, uh, and compete against each other as well. You know, offense versus defense and all that good stuff. So just finishing up. Uh, about an eight-week uh, off-season program to get these guys in, in good position to be ready for spring ball, you know, physically and mentally, and uh, really pleased with how that went as well. But um, with that, I'll open it up to questions that you have, and I'll let it rip. How is the off-season uh, program any different, and what? How are you seeing the results now? Well, you know, as far as results are concerned, I guess. Um, uh, I, I mean, I can see our guys. Um, I see their bodies changing. Uh, they're 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 uh, muscling up good. They're they're getting lean. Uh, you know, there's there's probably more running uh, incorporated in this off season program. More long, uh, longer area running. Uh, we had some, uh, you know, short area quickness drills and things of that nature, along with some running that we had. But I'd say we were running probably a little bit more. Um, but uh, and then a lot of, you know, a lot of the drills that we're doing um, are probably a little bit more uh, position specific or football specific. I think I think that's uh, a little bit different too. So uh, I, I like how it's going. Does, um Bryce Ramsey go into this spring as the number one guy trying to hold off the other guys, or do you have yeah. one A, B, and C? In it? Yeah, I'd say it's more one A, B, and C right now. Really, it's a matter of um, uh, you know giving all of those guys an opportunity to get reps and uh, try to make it as equal as possible. Um, I'm sure we'll be rotating who's number one on any given day as far as getting reps with that unit and just. Uh, I think all QBs will get reps with the ones and the twos, and um, you know whether or not we have enough for threes or not. I don't know yet. How much do the dynamics of that quarterback evaluation competition change going from Coach Bobo, who obviously recruited these guys, mm. and coached them, and developed them to just the whole right. set of us? Well, uh, obviously, new quarterbacks coach uh, in Coach Schottenheimer, and uh, and he's going to be. Yeah, I mean, I guess the best way I can say it, it's a little bit like. It was last year on defense. You know, everybody had an opportunity to uh, prove what they could do, and uh, there was a lot of, uh, you know, I, you guys always wanted to know the depth chart and how things were going, and it was just too hard to determine that because there was just so many guys getting opportunities to, to, uh, you know, get the quality reps or well, they're all quality reps, but getting the reps with the one unit. Would the goal be to have a, a starter coming out of the spring? Or yeah. You uh, it's hard to say. Um, you know, with the amount of uh, transition and uh, learning going on, I mean, I'm not. I'm not certain we'll be able to make that determination at that point. Uh, I don't anticipate, or I'm not sitting here saying we're going to have to name a number one by the end of spring. I'm not. Uh, I'm not thinking that's going to be the case, or that that that's a, a a big goal of ours. You know, the big thing is to, uh, you know give these guys opportunities and, and see how they handle it and, and evaluate and try to make that determination when we get there. You and uh, Brian said when he was in here that it would, it would be easier for him to learn your system mm -hmm. rather than 60 guys learning his system. Right. How, how is that? Uh, did, did you right. had to test uh, yeah. Brian like you do with your quarterbacks yeah. if they know the system? Or? Well, there's it, it's a little bit of a melting pot of, 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 of you know, people's ideas, you know, the ideas that he's brought in and things that we've done in the past. Um, you know, I w it, I'm not going to sit here and say it's 100% exactly the same verbiage uh, that we had. Um, 
a year ago, but um, but as far as the things that we're doing, uh, married up very well, you know. So as far as the, you know, will we call this thing maybe a little bit different? This this blocking combination maybe a little bit different uh, here and there. But uh, if there is a little bit of a change, it'll be like, you know, our guys will say, well, that's that is that's this the way we did it last year. It was called this last year. It's called this year, this year. But it's not a change of the so much of the of the blocking scheme itself. Just how you how you name it, how you call it. Okay, how big an adjustment is it for you these changes so with the offensive staff and, and for your players? Well, you know, there's a learning curve for everybody to a certain degree, but um, it's it's healthy, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm enjoying it. You know, learning uh, some new things, and there's a lot of things that. Uh, uh, that we've been doing that, you know, kind of the proof's in the pudding on the film, and, and Coach uh, uh, Shoddy really likes it. And, uh, you know, so we're we're just kind of melding everybody's ideas together and making it make sense for everybody. Along the line of changes in general, I mean, it's sort of inevitable, but is it healthy sometimes, too, to have change? I mean, it seems like it's inevitable in college football. Yeah, you know, I, I think um, it's, it's just like uh, whether you um, – change staff or not, you're, you you tend to, let's say the staff didn't change at all, I mean, the, normally you're going to go visit somebody and learn new ideas. I mean, you want to continue to to stay on top of what's going on out there and do things that uh, you think, that we think can help us get better, you know. So when you change staff, then you, you've got guys that live in-house that maybe you'd go visit. And, uh, you know, so you get a chance to exchange those ideas and, and uh, have it all come together where it makes the most sense for us. It definitely uh, makes it uh, exciting as far as staying on top of things and and uh, and just seeing uh, maybe a little bit different way of doing things. Uh, but I will say, you know, philosophically, uh, we're very very close to in philosophy about how we like to go about our business. So I think that's been good. But there's always going to be a few tweaks here and there. You're on record as saying that uh, an indoor practice facility you would prefer to have on campus and really right. like your, that's going to happen. What's your feelings on that and how much input do you have on what that's going to end up looking like? Well, um, obviously, um, to have it on this site would uh, would be great. And, uh, and as far as, you know, how much input, um, I mean, I'm having input. I'm sure uh, other coaches and other sports are having some input because it won't be won't be strictly football. But I know it'll, it'll serve our needs, and that's what we're most excited about. Has what it has happened since the bowl game with your contracts for your coaches and yourself and, and the uh, facility? Has that uh, maybe given you a, a greater appreciation? For Well, I think we've been moving in a real healthy direction in, in those uh, areas, and uh, and I'm thankful for that. Can you speak on the quality control positions? Maybe kind of tell us a little bit about what they do. Uh, mm. Have you filled all of those? And right. Where do you see them? Well, it's funny them? how this is this quality control thing has uh, uh, gotten some legs, I guess. But uh, we, we had... Um, uh, two quality control coaches uh, on each side of the ball a year ago. Uh, we haven't added uh, any quality control positions. Uh, and a quality control coach is basically a guy who um, will do uh, just about everything a coach would do other than they, they cannot be on the field coaching. There's only so many coaches that could be field coaches. The nine full-time coaches, myself, Couple graduate assistant coaches on each side of the ball. Student assistant coaches uh, can do a little bit of that, but um, there's just so much film breakdown that's got to be done. There's a lot of things that got to be done, uh, even you know in-house recruiting, things of that nature that uh, that uh, these guys can get involved with. But uh, um, 
that's what those guys do for the most part. So is there a special team that's been hired? Or yeah, there's hired? also uh, a special teams. I think we're calling him an analyst, but it's we had a special teams uh, quality control guy a year ago as well, and uh, we just we changed the name of it, but uh, it's basically the same type of responsibility, just you know, doing as much that could be possibly done without actually physically uh, being on the field coaching as far as preparation and helping the special teams coaches do their job. When you moved Brian to receivers coach, uh, how much cajoling did, did it maybe take for him to do that? Uh, and what was your concern about the dynamics of, of that? Yeah. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, Brian is an outstanding coach, outstanding recruiter, a great bulldog, uh, just very capable guy, very capable of coaching running backs, very capable of coaching wide receivers and uh, you know when we decide to make that move uh, you know I think the biggest reservation any coach has uh, especially in a situation like this is that you know he's he's been very involved in recruiting the running backs and very involved in coaching those guys obviously in that room coaches take ownerships take ownership of the rooms that they're in excuse me and uh, so I think just making that move and you know, thinking about how that might feel there, but uh, but as far as uh, his willingness to do it, you know, he was excited about the opportunity to do it, and uh, and uh, we're glad of that. And uh, and then, you know, bringing in Thomas, uh, another you know great bulldog, another guy is very capable coach and recruiter um, in his own right. Uh, we feel like uh, we're in really good shape in both areas now. Mark, have you been um, fortunate enough to have two? senior quarterbacks the last couple of years. Um, you also have Dave Andrews on that offense. Oh, yeah. You never had to worry about that position. Mm -hmm. How much of a challenge would it be as your coach football looking at the field goal shoot? Yeah, the QB and center, you know, right up the gut. Uh, very important guys that make a lot of decisions at the line of scrimmage, you know, guys that uh, um, have a very strong leadership role historically, your quarterback and your center. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be a very big, um, very important uh, task to be able to replace those guys and get the right guys in there. And, and uh, we talked a little bit about the QB situation, uh, but uh, you know, right now we got uh, Hunter Long, who's taking a boatload of reps at that position. We'll be working there, and then uh, Isaiah Wynn as well. Will be those are the two guys, the two main guys I would say that'll be battling for that spot at center. Coach, how about on the other line, where last year I know the numbers at the times you guys playing, it dwindled as the year went on, but still losing a lot of experience there. Yeah, we had some guys that played well for us, um, guys that were, um, uh, you know, that are, you know, getting ready for their opportunity in the NFL right now, guys that, uh, that have been uh, real solid people and, and players for us, and and uh, and so now you got to replace. I mean, that's just that's just part of it. Uh, more opportunity for uh, the guys that remain. And you got Dawson and Mays and Bailey and Deloach and Galliard, and Atkins. Uh, you got some new guys in here already. Uh, you know, Ledbetter's here. Uh, you know, Jonathan and uh, his uh, brother Joseph may end up getting a little work on that side of the ball as well. So. Um, just a great challenge for those guys to have a, to step up and play ball. Mark, how do you feel about your inside linebacker spot, and uh, is that what you envision Roquan Smith competing when he gets to campus? I'm trying to think if I can talk about Roquan Smith, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean anybody that um, you know, Roquan is an inside linebacker. I mean, obviously, he's a guy that uh, we want to come in and compete. Um, you know, I was mainly going to talk about the guys that were here in the spring, that are going to be here in the spring, but but uh, he's certainly a guy that uh, is a very dynamic athlete at that position, a guy that can really run and, and, and change direction and cover people and and uh, out of the backfield, but also has a you know a physical toughness about him that where he can play in the box. So, uh, but that's you know that's the kind of guys we're looking for, and uh, you know we'll start out. Um, more than likely with Carter and Kimbro uh, here this spring, and and uh, and then we got a couple guys that 
came here at the mid-year and Gaines and Amici and, and uh, Dietrich Dukes there. And you know, so we've got some guys that uh, uh, we'll get some reps and see. We'll see how they do. But that Roquan thing was pretty bizarre, right? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Orson Charles, how long did he wait after? Yeah, he was about a month or something. I don't know how long that was, but uh, it was a little different, though. Uh, Jonas Jones in that. Can you talk about that? Mm-hmm. Decided to bring Jonas back in, in that Yeah, Jonas, uh, former player. Obviously, Jonas, <laughs> I missed Jonas uh, by a year, I guess. Uh, the year I came in and started watching video of the team just to see what we had, I really thought Jonas was an underclassman. I was kind of excited when I watched this film and I was looking at him at the tackle position. And it was actually a pro day when it dawned on me that he was leaving because I think it was pro day and he was out there and he looked like, you know, I thought he was just there watching it with the fellas, you know, with the other guys. And he's like, Coach, I'm, this is my pro day, <laughs> you know. <laughs> kind of broke my heart there. But uh, we joke and laugh about that a little bit. But uh, but he's a guy that's uh, been through all the things that our players have been through and, and, and done things that they hope to do. And, uh, you know, so he's a very good role model for them and a guy that uh, just has a heart for for young people, has a heart for the for the Bulldog program in, in specific, and uh, we really think he's going to do a good job helping helping our guys navigate the the life of a college football uh, football player at Georgia. Talk about the um, you know the NFL coach. Can you talk a little bit? I know this is kind of off topic, and I apologize, but what kind of pros do you think Chris Connolly and Damian Swan? Yeah. Oh yeah, those guys uh, are going to do well. Very intelligent guys, guys that you know. People talk about football IQs and all that, but uh, I guarantee you they could get on the board and uh, talk with any GM or any head coach or position coach and really explain you know what they're doing, why they're doing it. Uh, have the ability to play. Uh, you know, Damien is very versatile, and uh, uh, he could. He could play corner, nickel, or safety probably. I think that he at least understands it well enough and has the skill set to do it. And then, you know, Chris Chris has proven to me that he could be an inside slot receiver. He could be a wider. He could be an outside receiver. He's got the speed to do the outside receiver stuff, and he's got the, the toughness to block and, and make the catches in, in, in traffic as a slot receiver. So, And, and again, he understands the game well so uh i think they'll both be great pros quite frankly do you guys expect any other position changes guys move from offense to defense like deacon boots moving back linebacker? uh well there's one guy uh uh welch will uh move from offensive line to fullback so uh that's one guy that i can think of right off the top of my head no, it's been great. It's great. Fifteen years, that's a it's an exciting exciting year. Looking forward to it. So along, along the same lines, um you know, you've always talked about being here and, and sticking around for a while uh, and not avoid four more wins and tie uh, Coach Sweats for second place all the time. Is that right? Do you, do you ever have a chance to, to think about you know, where you are in the next I, I know Coach Dooley's got over 200. That's the only thing I know. I didn't know who was next in line, and so you saying that uh, is news to me. But, um, you know, you, you mostly uh, reflect on what you're going to get done today. I mean, <laughs> you can't uh, you can't look too far down the road. And, and really the goal right now is just to prepare these guys to – to uh, be be ready for when those when those games come and and I'm I'm really pleased with uh, their effort their their coachability teachability um, it's been good. Is there anything you can quote unquote teach or during the springtime that you know really focuses these guys from going from a nine and ten team to that next level? Mm. I just think you got to focus on. The little things, you know, on a daily basis, um, just take care of business uh, uh, academically, take care of business in the off-season, 
you know, take advantage of the time you have and the meetings with your coaches and and uh, and, and and do more than than what's asked of you because um, you know, there are limitations as far as how much time we can have with these guys and and I think if you want to be great you got to be willing to put in some extra time and we've had a lot of guys that are like that over the years that have, have had tremendous success at Georgia and, and then down the road uh, you know whether it's foot you know pro football or, or just business their business life or whatever it may be but uh, I think guys need to put a little bit extra in too. You know what Jeremy's emphasis uh, is in the spring in particular? I know everyone's got a certain position aspects, but... Well, we talked just a little bit about it, and uh, I don't think he's looking to dial up a bunch of defenses and a bunch of blitzes and a bunch of stunts and a bunch of, uh, you know, scheme. Uh, I think he's really wanting to line up and see who's tough and who can tackle and who can, who can, who can play ball for us, you know. Uh, so, uh, not to say we want to have multiple coverages and looks and things of that nature, but um, the goal is going to be, you know, lining up and playing ball and seeing who's physically and mentally tough enough to do it. Is that what spring ball is about, coach? Just a lot more physical than you can be in the fall. Because you've got games to worry about. You don't have any games to worry about, so you can just kind of get after it and hit more. Um, you know, we will scrimmage. You know, we'll have three scrimmage opportunities and. And I don't know if we'll tackle to the ground on, on those other days, maybe a little bit here and there. Uh, you know, we think you can teach blocking and tackling without, you know, going to the ground all the time but uh, or cutting your teammate below the waist on certain blocks. So, you know, we want to be wise, but we, we do want to be physical. We do want to see, um, you know, who can, who can play the game. And uh, that's why you have those scrimmage opportunities to just uh, make it as close to a game as possible and just see how guys respond to that. You know what? Uh, he uh, was obviously learning, uh, but uh, he can throw it. Um, and he, he did spend a good bit of time on the scout team. He, he, did, he was very unselfish in that role and, and uh, given the best possible look. And, and uh, he really showed some good leadership with that group, you know, because you can go over there and pout or you can go over there and try to get better and also try to, you know, help the defense get better. And uh, that's what his attitude was. We were very pleased with that, and and uh, I think it served him well. And, and now it's now it's time to, you know, let him let him compete. Did I hear you say Joseph played better to defense from tight end? Yes, he'll he'll work a little bit there. I'm not exactly sure if it'll be, you know, an end or a, or a tackle or or what. But uh, he's been working over there with uh, with Coach Rocker and. Uh, Coach Shear a little bit, is mostly that, Coach Rocker. Uh, well, we're moving him there for now. Yeah, we want to see what he can do. Two lead betters in the same room, I guess. Two lead betters in the same room. Great, great kids, great family. Coach, could I ask you one more time about uh, Todd Gurley? What kind of what would you say to the NFL folks about him if they're looking to draft Todd Gurley? I'd say he's a beast. I'd say he's a great player and. Uh, you know, if, if somebody needs a great back, I, I, he'd be my first pick. There's no doubt about it. Coach, what do you, what do you look for from the guys who uh, were able to contribute as freshmen, like uh, Sanders and Carter on defense? You saw top of my head, those two guys. Right. As, you, as they go into that second year, particularly right. in spring ball, what exactly are you looking for? Well, I mean, you want to continue to perfect what you do you want to continue to get better at what you do you want to continue to you know get uh, stronger and in, in better condition and, and, uh, um, and you know usually guys will put on some pounds as they go uh, but without losing that speed or agility and all that kind of thing but you know, there's a lot of uh, really positive qualities that these guys have to be able to contribute as true freshmen and uh, you just want to you want to grow, want them to grow in that way and uh, begin to assume a little bit more leadership uh, as you go. I mean, once you play and prove that you uh, are responsible enough to, and, and talented enough to get a bunch of snaps, then it's, you know, it's time to help the other guys reach that level as well.
also part the DBs from uh, Mississippi that were early enrollees. So mm-hmm. Are they corners? Are they safeties? Uh, the uh, you know what? Very versatile kids that uh, will. We'll, I'm sure Coach will, uh, Coach Pruitt will give them some opportunities, and, and we'll try to just nail down what, where it's, it's going to be for those guys. But they are uh, they're long, athletic guys that that you know I think can do either one, and we'll just have to wait and see where they land. How much interaction have you had with Mike, uh, if at all, uh, Coach Bobo? Yeah. Uh, just a little bit of text in here and there. You has know, he, really hadn't sat down and has it. Like, has he ever said to you yet so far, hey, now I understand? Uh, no, nah, not yet. I mean, I'm sure I would, my guess, the first time both of us slow down enough to chat would be after spring ball. And, you know, head coaches aren't on the road at that time. And my guess is there'll be enough of the dust settling where we'll have some, we'll have some good conversations. Did you spend any time with Belichick in the last five hours? Uh, bri- yeah, just briefly got a chance to say hello to him uh, on the front end. And, uh, uh, you know, he uh, had a chance to do what he wanted to get done today. But uh, it was good to see him. I don't know if anybody had a sighting of him at the basketball game. But uh, yeah, I think he was trying to come in a little bit low profile. And then when he heard about the game, he, he was excited about an opportunity to, to go see it. And uh, as it turned out, he really enjoyed it. It was just fun for him to watch a great athletic competition where he wasn't coaching it and he didn't have somebody on either team that, he was kind of pulling for it. He just got to enjoy a great competition. Coach, what does the injury situation look like at running back? Are you expecting to have Terman or, or Keith back during the, uh, during the spring? Yeah, Terman will be, be working. Keith will be working. Uh, you know, obviously uh, we'll have Chubb and Sony, and and then Brandon Douglas uh, will be working as well. So uh, all those guys will be ready to go. We, we all tackle that this, this spring at all? If we scrimmage, yeah, okay. if they can. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't want to get into injury report right now. If we can help it. Got one more question. Do you have one? Were you waiting? Yeah, I just want to know your guys are about to go off on spring break. Mm-hmm. Uh, been gone for a week. Have you spoken to them? Or you plan to kind of? Uh... Yeah, we got a good meeting set up tomorrow just to remind them of all the things that they need to be reminded of, which which we remind them of. Uh, on a weekly on a weekly basis. Oh yeah, absolutely. You got any good spring break memories of the that you can share? <laughs> well, my uh, yeah, being at the University of Miami, we were relatively close to Fort Lauderdale, <laughs> and I did have a teammate uh, named Mark Rush who was from Stranahan High School, and uh, Mark, you know, Stranahan High School is in Fort Lauderdale, so Mark kind of. He knew the ropes, so uh, that's that's as, much, as far as I'll go. <laughs> as far as I'll go. A lot of the players will be out in the foyer.